Hey guys, I just spatchcocked a chicken for my garlicky herby yogurt marinated spatchcock chicken. It's in this bag here and it's gonna sit in this garlicky yogurt for 24 hours. We'll make it tomorrow. And then we'll rub off some of the yogurt and we'll rub some herbs in there under the skin and everything and get it nice and seasoned. And then it's gonna be so out of this world delicious. Okay guys, let's get this chicken spatchcocked. This is awesome. It's an awesome way to cook chicken because it cooks faster and it's basically just butterflying your chicken. You're taking the spine out, um, the backbone, and it's going to lie like this with its legs spread out and everything. And then it cooks much faster. And then because it's laying on that sheet pan, it, a lot of the edges, there are more crispy edges. It just gives it a lot of flavor, especially in this marinade with the yogurt and the herbs and the garlic. Um, the herbs, We'll stick to the yogurt, and when we take the chicken out of the marinade, we'll kind of scrape off some of the yogurt, but we'll leave some on as well because the yogurt caramelizes and it gets so, so yummy. Like the sugars in the yogurt caramelize and, and um, it makes the chicken nice and brown and toasty and flavorful. And the enzymes in the yogurt really, really um, tenderize the chicken. So it's just, it's so good. So if you have 24 hours, make sure you give your chicken 24 hours. If not, do it in the morning and then you can make it at night, but it's so yummy. This is one of my favorite recipes, um, especially since we infuse the yogurt with garlic, grated garlic too. So grated garlic has a lot more garlicky flavor. You're really gonna get a lot more out of your garlic if you grate it rather than chop it. So try to do that. You have to keep the garlic cloves whole, which can be a pain peeling them, um, but it's so worth it in this recipe. And then once this is all marinated, all you do is take it out of the bag, put it on your sheet pan, put it in the, uh, scrape off some of the yogurt, rub it with some herbs, get it in the um, oven and you're good to go. And it's like delicious and impressive and it's gorgeous. Um, okay, so first what we need to do, I have two gallon size Ziploc bags here and our chicken's gonna go in here. So let's get that in here. I have my chicken and let's see, let's turn it. This is the breast side right here. I've got the wings. You kind of want to sit it up like that on its behind. Um, and you're going to need a sharp knife. So if you didn't sharpen your knife before you attempted to do this, you might want to do that now. Okay, so here's the backbone. It's very easy to find. Have the backbone facing you, but this is the backbone right here. You can feel it with your fingers. It's right there. So set it on its behind. There are a number of ways to do this. This is my favorite way to do it. You can use kitchen shears as well, but I really like a nice sharp knife, a plastic cutting board, set it up on its rear like this with the wings at the top. That's my ideal way of doing it. And then you can take your knife and you can start cutting and you can feel, I wish I could show you this a little better. Um, you can actually feel where you got to use a little muscle but stay as close to the backbone as you can and you can feel there I've already done one side okay so see how it's opened up we're gonna get here's our backbone right here we're gonna get that out set it up on its side and just run your life knife right down the side of it Almost done. It's so worth it. You could also ask your butcher to do it. Um, but I like to do it myself. You gotta kind of find, there we go. Done. Oh, just a little skin. Thank you, mama. Now, do not throw this away. You can make chicken stock with this and it makes amazing chicken stock. And I use my chicken stock. I always have some in the freezer. I use chicken stock for anything that calls for chicken broth or chicken stock. And then I make chicken soup with it as well. And it's insanely good. There's such a difference between homemade chicken stock and um, your box stuff. Although they make really good quality box stuff these days, but you know what I mean. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of 
push it open. So let's see, I'll put this right here and save that for later. We're gonna push this open. You can kind of feel the bones crack. And it's perfect. All right, let me put my sink in here and I'll kind of fold it up for you. See how pretty that is? Okay, so we wanna get it in this bag um, and then we're gonna salt it. And it's going to be salted in the bag for, this is a double bag actually, two bags together. We're gonna salt it and we're gonna heavily salt it. And it's going to be in the, um, the refrigerator for about an hour. And you really wanna like get the salt all over underneath the skin, really massage it. Really get in there and massage the chicken. Use a lot of salt. Because remember, we're gonna be putting a tub of yogurt in here and not Greek yogurt, like regular plain old yogurt. And so that will wash away some of the salt. That's why we're salting it ahead of time. So it can be seasoned properly. Um, and then that garlic infused, yogurt is just going to take it over the top and it's going to be delicious and tender and I swear every single person that you serve this to will love it and they'll be like that's so creative where did you even think of that it's the same kind of idea as using um buttermilk you know and I do make actually um I have a recipe on this channel or garlic infused buttermilk chicken breasts. I only do the breasts with the buttermilk for some reason. I've just been doing it like that for a long time. But this one is gonna be amazing. You're gonna love it. All right, so it's all chickeny now. So I'm gonna put this in a, um, like a glass dish and then stick it in the fridge for one hour and then I'll bring you back and I'll show you how to do the marinade for it. Okay guys, our chicken has been in the refrigerator for an hour and um, I triple bagged it. So this bag is nice and clean. There is no chickeny yuckiness on the outside of this bag. This is nice and clean. It can go right in the fridge and it's great to triple bag it because then it won't leak in your fridge overnight. Okay, so I have four garlic cloves here. Let me show you how we get, and our yogurt. We have whole milk, plain, regular old yogurt. Um, so we'll, we're gonna use that, but right now, let me show you what I do. We are going to pepper it. Remember, there's no pepper, and you know I can't live without my black pepper. Let's open that up. So as much pepper as you like. Don't worry about herbs or anything like that, because remember, we're going to rub the herbs all over it once we get a little bit of yogurt, yogurt off of it tomorrow, right before it goes into the oven. And we're gonna use some thyme, some, um, some thyme, some rosemary, some maybe oregano, whatever woodier kind of uh, stronger herbs you like um, that can stand up to some heat in the kitchen. Okay, so, I mean in the oven. Okay, so let's get our braided garlic in here. I love doing this because it really um, scents, scent, scents the garlic, I mean the, the yogurt um, really, really well. You get that kind of essence of garlic without like an overbearing, real, um, real super strong garlicky flavor. Oopsie daisies. Just once you've grated it all, just throw the nubs right in there. Okay, I'm gonna finish grating all of these and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got all of our garlic cloves grated in here. Um, you could even add more garlic if you wanted to. I oh, I almost did that. Okay, so I have a 32 ounce um, tub of plain whole milk um, yogurt. Let it settle in there. I'm just going to zip up the out the outer um, Ziploc bag, and then we'll kind of smush everything around so that the yogurt coats everything. The yogurt really gets in there 
and the garlic and try and push out as much air as you can too. You don't want any air in there. You want the marinade to really kind of really soak into all the little crevices in your chicken. All right, and then just massage it all around. Make sure it gets all over. You might have to kind of force the yogurt down a little bit, depending on um, how liquidy your yogurt is. This is looking good. I can't wait for you guys to see the finished product because it's like, it's outstanding. It's delicious. And you could also, in the summertime, I mean, I can do it year round because I live in um, Los Angeles, but, and it's been really hot here, it's like cool weather. Um, but in the summertime, you can pop this on the grill and I'm telling you, it is so insanely delicious. <laughs> you are seriously going to love this. You're gonna make it all the time. This is something I've been making for several years. All right, this is ready to go into my fridge. Just gonna put it in my fridge just like this. It's nice and the outside is nice and clean. And then tomorrow I will, um, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how to get it all together and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Hey guys, our chicken has been marinating for 24 hours and it is ready to be cooked. This is what we're having for dinner tonight and it's gonna be awesome. Everyone was so excited when they found out this is what dinner is. Um, alongside our chicken, we're going to serve two baked potatoes. I'm not having a baked potato because I was a little, a little indulgent today. So I'm gonna cut the carbs for tonight. Um, so I'm making two large baked potatoes, russet potatoes. I've got one already, um, already packed up and ready on my sheet pan. It's going, gonna go on the sh same sheet pan as our chicken. So it's really, really easy. And it will take around the same time as our chicken will take to cook at the same temperature. So it works perfectly. So let me show you how I do my baked potatoes. I've been doing them the same way, um, you know, since I've been making baked potatoes. So I like to pierce one side three times with a fork and then the other side three times with a fork. And then I like to get a little drizzle of olive oil, garlic powder, and I have a piece of aluminum foil right here. Garlic powder and pepper, black pepper. I love my fresh cracked black pepper. If you watch this channel, you know that. So I'm just going to wrap it up, put, bring the two sides up, and then fold it over. It's gonna go on our large sheet pan. I have a large sheet pan here that's lined with aluminum foil and parchment paper for our chicken. And wait till you see our chicken, the yogurt caramelizes and it like gives it this nice toasty brown color and slightly tangy flavor and it's really tender and just really yummy and then spatchcocking it makes makes there's so much more surface area to get nice and brown and crusty all right so let's get this out you're gonna need lots oh you know what I forgot a very important important step we are going to prepare our herbs so we're gonna Take some of this yogurt off and then we're going to kind of rub it with some salty, some herbs with some salt and pepper. So in this bowl, I have some kosher salt and we're gonna put a lot of black pepper in here because you know I love my black pepper. And we're just gonna kind of do this ahead of time so that we can not worry about cross-contamination. We can kind of season the bird, touch the bird and then go back into our bowl and with our yucky hands and not have to worry about it. And then we'll just toss the rest of this. So lots of black pepper. Then after you wash your hands and everything is all set, the bird is all set on your sheet pan, you can go back in and like, like sprinkle some more salt on the top if you feel like it needed more salt or more black pepper. Okay, so I have dried herbs here, but you can use fresh as well. I have dried thyme leaves. And I'm just gonna take this top dried rosemary. I like to smush it in my hands. I know I didn't just do that with the thyme because I forgot, but you might want to do that because it really break, brings out the oils and makes it um, super, super aromatic. 
Okay, I have some fresh rosemary, and you can use whatever herbs you like. You can add crushed red pepper to this as well. Um, it's totally up to you what you like on your chicken. Sitar seasoning would be really yummy too. All right, let's get some garlic powder in there. I'm gonna take the whole top off. Just get some garlic powder in, and now it's time for the chicken. We'll just give this a little toss with our hands. So now we don't have to worry about washing our hands every time we touch the chicken. All right, let's bring our sheet pan up here. I've got my baked potatoes ready. This is a large sheet pan, and let's bring out our beautiful chicken. I have paper towels ready for me right here. And I also have, in my sink next to me, I have a plastic grocery bag that I'm just going to dump the towels in when I'm done with them and um, just throw the grocery bag away. I'm really, really careful about cross-contamination with meats, um, especially poultry. So we'll put this bag, that's trash, in our trash bag. And look at this beautiful thing here. Look at how pretty it is. Oh my God, it smells so good too. It is like one giant flat chicken. And it's gonna be amazing. Wait till you see, and then wait till you make it. Pictures just won't do justice on how super yummy this is. So I'm taking some of the yogurt off, but I'm not being crazy about it because I actually want some of the yogurt on. If I didn't want it on, I'd just rinse the chicken, but I want some of the yogurt on. That will give it a nice caramelized crust. All right, this bird has been well taken care of. It's a lucky one. All right, let's see here. We have our seasoning. Let's get it all over, and I mean all over, under the skin, underneath, really massage it in. Get those seasonings in there. I'm gonna flip it over and start with the, with the underside first. I like to put the skin side on the top and you should do that too. All right. Really massage it in. Get all in the nooks and crannies. My oven is preheating right now. It's at 425, well, it's at 450. And um, this is a little trick that I accident, accidentally stumbled upon. Um, one time, I preheated the oven, I was making a roast chicken and I preheated it to 450 and I didn't mean to. And then when I realized when I put the chicken in the oven, I turned it back down and then it was like the best, it, I turned it down to 425 and it was the best chicken ever. Put your chicken into a nice screaming hot oven and turn it down when you put your chicken in and then you get like the crusty outside and the super tender inside. All right, this is just, about done. Make sure underneath the skin is all seasoned up. Just kind of separate the skin with your fingers and get everything in there. This is my favorite way to cook a chicken. Um, spatchcocking, I mean. All right, so. This is good to go, it's nice and flat. And seasoned. I'm going to wash my hands and I'll be right back and I'll show you what we do next. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna wash my hands and put this in the oven with the baked potatoes on the side right here. And they're going into a 425 degree oven. And um, it's gonna take about an hour and 20 minutes, but that's not exact. It, it depends on how big your chicken was or is. Um, you always wanna think like 20 pounds per, 20 minutes per pound, but when you spatchcock, it cooks faster. So let me time this and I'll give you a totally 100% accurate time of how long it took. And um, I'll be right back. Hey guys, so our chicken is done. It was in there for exactly one hour, which is great. That's really fast for roasting a chicken. Um, 
let's take a look at it. I put our baked potatoes back in. They needed a few more minutes, um, but they'll be, the baked potatoes can be in there while our chicken rests for about 10 minutes. So let me show you what it looks like though. It's nice and crusty. See how the yogurt like caramelizes it and gets the crust super crispy and yummy. It's just, or the skin super crispy and yummy. We'll let this rest. It's at 165 degrees right now, which is what you want to always make sure your poultry is at. You always want to make sure you have your poultry at 165 degrees. That's when it's safe to eat. So I stuck a thermometer in there. We're good to go. It's just resting. We're waiting for our baked potatoes and we are good. I'll, call, I'll bring you back and we'll carve this up and then I'll taste it for you. All right, our chicken has been resting. Let's carve this baby up. So tender. I like to serve my, my meats on um, wooden cutting boards. So I'll carve this up and then I'll show you how I arrange it. So we've got the leg, the thigh, and I like to, when I'm removing the breast, I like to go down the middle and then I like to either, I'll remove the wing, there's the wing, and sometimes I like to slice it up and then sometimes I like to keep it whole, but because we all love the breast so much, I'm going to slice it up. And Let's take the whole, and I, t I like to take the whole breast off of the bone. Nice and tender, super duper yummy. Nice slices, try to keep the skin on it. So tender, mm, yummy, yummy. It smells so good in here. All right, so let me show you how I arrange this. I'm gonna slice this one up and then I'll show you how I arrange it. And I really, really like to serve my roast chicken on, my, um, on a wooden cutting board. I think it looks really rustic and really pretty. So let's get this on here. And get our breasts. And they're kind of the centerpiece for our family. Our family really likes the breast meat. And then just kind of arrange it, make sure it looks pretty. Gorgeous. And then this one, I've already tasted this and it's tangy and delicious and yummy and awesome as usual. Put that one right there. And we've got our two wings. So let's see, put that, arrange it however you, you think looks pretty. And there you go. Something for everybody. Crispy, tangy, tender, delicious, herby, garlicky, 